It's uh, seven minutes into the treaty day on the 29th of September. I'm going to go up to my intraday and intraday's enabled. I'm going to go ahead and update the intraday now just to make sure that everything's current. It doesn't take long to uh, get this out of a thinkorswim, which has to be running in the background. Always start thinkorswim first and then open HGSI or it may not work. Okay, so what I want to do here is I'm going to go into my market analysis user groups. I'm going to go to the major markets plus. I'm going to go to under top down process views. I'm going to go to the intraday <coughs> version of this and sort them all combo. And as you would suspect, since we saw some movement into semiconductors yesterday, this is where the money's going to flow back into it. Uh, as I mentioned before, whenever the market turns, money seems to flow back into this group. So I'll bring the socks up, and you can see it was a gap open eight minutes ago, but now there's a little bit of profit taking. There's no volume on this index. So let's uh, let's take a look at the Qs. You can see the gap open. Huge projected volume. This means nothing at this point. Uh, it's just, uh, well, it's a comparison to the same time yesterday, but it's just uh, overwhelming at first. So don't pay any attention to that right now. But here's a weekly chart. You can see uh, that uh, it is going up because of this gap. And uh, I'll wait to see how it works out. Let's make this uh, full screen. So the only thing that's down, as you would expect, would be the VIX or the UVXY. We don't have the VIX in here anymore, but uh, we have this, which works. And all of the other indexes are up. And here's the percentage changes. Here's the intraday range. You can see there's been pullback on a lot of these already. But what's holding up? Utilities and the NYSE are holding the range best of all. Now I'm going to drop down to the ETFs and ETNs. Sort on raw combo. Looks like silver is the leader today at 3.04% so far. Let's take a look at the charts. You can see the huge gap open here. Weekly chart isn't uh, showing much. It's in a a large congestion area. Semiconductor ETF. Here's where we can get a feel for for what's going on with the uh, ETF. And you can see that uh, there's a gap up here also. The volume at this point is only 520,000. Trades about 29 million during the day. So it's really too early to tell much right now. But uh, there uh, was definitely a gap open in most of these ETFs. I'll make it full screen again. Gasoline's down. Natural gas is down. The short-term treasury bond is down. So the TLT is going up. They just work inversely to one another. So I, I'm taking a, getting a quick read here, but where's the real strength? Silver, semis, gold. Uh, the QQQ, this is the uh, equal, weighted, equal weighted NASDAQ 100, the QQQE. Uh, this is a broad market um, ETF. And here's the Q right here. Let's look at the Q. This is yesterday's information on the above average, above average, and mid. If I bring the chart up, we're going to... When I make it full screen, we can see this. You can see right now, whoops. This reflects what's happening now. Very narrow, closed mid sentiment is neutral right now after the gap up. Doesn't really tell us anything this time of day, but I like to look at this stuff. What I do like to look at, even though this is extremely exaggerated, you can see right now the intraday volume is running. 260%, uh, 64% above the normal 20-day uh, moving average 
volume at approximately this time uh, yesterday. Okay, now what I'd like to do next is I like to go into my reference groups and I'll click on industries and I'm going to go up to tools, rebuild indexes in the group. It's taking that updated uh, information from thinkorswim from the stocks and it's building the index groups. At the same time, I'm going to go ahead and rebuild the user smart groups. This takes, oh, approximately 30 to 40 seconds uh, when I'm not recording. So I'm going to let that finish and then we're going to take a look at it because we're going to get a feel for what the market's doing as far as uh, industry groups. Okay, I paused that for a few seconds, uh, but it's just finishing up. So now we'll go into industries. I'll click through to the industries. And now I'm going to go to another place. I'm going to go down to my Ron's Daily Prospecting. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to HCSI indexes. Top down percentage price change one day. You can see this last date says 929. That's because I rebuilt these today. I'm sorted on Raw Combo. Nike reported last night. So you can see this group, the apparel footwear. An accessory design group is up 5.6%. That is primarily due to Nike. If I change to the industry group, and then I have to go down to another view. Uh, I'm in my top down scorecard views for HGSI index analysis, but I want to see the stocks that are up today in view number six. Percentage price change up. So I don't have to go down to my regular scorecard view. I can just go here. And you can see uh, the stocks are up today. These are the ones that are up. These are the ones that are down today. Just flip back between 6 and 6A. And uh, the other stocks in this group are following along. Here's Nike. You can see the three hadn't crossed the six on Nike while there was just an update. So let's take a look at it on the charts. You can see that it opened clear up a gap to open here, traded down, is going back up. Here's stopping volume yesterday. Here's uh, confirms strength returning. Look at this projected volume right now. I said earlier that these bars don't mean that much right now All you, as far as actual numbers, but you can see that there is very strong buying in Nike, and that's the leading group. Now, if I bring this back up, since I changed views, I really need to go back to the designer. Just click on Industries again, and then go back up the percentage price change one day. Renewable Energy is up. You, if you look over here at the right, you can see how many advancers and decliners are in these groups. There's five advancers in the re Renewable Energy Project group, and then others, uh, especially real retailers, 22 and 2. So you can get a feel for how strong these groups are. Now here's application software. This group's up sharply today. I'm going to change to the industry group, and then once again, I'm going to go down to number six. These are the stocks that are up the most. I have strong momentum intraday as far as the combo. This shows me where the strength is in this group going down the list based upon that combo. So let's just take a quick look here. Notice that... <laughs> This stock on a weekly, weekly basis has been basing for a long time. It's had a lot of false starts. Here we're getting multiple VPA flags. If I make this full screen, we can see these. Test, no supply, strength seen returning, confirmation of strength seen returning with an effort up yesterday, and then a gap open today. If I put a cross here on it, you can see that it has finally past this short-term resistance here. These lines up here tell me 
that it's outperforming the S&P 500. And uh, this is the group line, the cyan line, the green line tells me that it is outperforming its own industry group, which is application software. So there's a lot of information. Look at the volume here. Now, there were many opportunities to buy this stock when it was being accumulated. That's why you should pay attention to these VPA flags. This one has been appearing in uh, some of my groups. It's a more expensive stock. You can see the weekly chart has um, been uh, moving up sharply over the past several weeks, even in a down market. Now, if we make this full screen, now there is a VPA flag here, test for supply, but there were no other VPA flags uh, on this. But there have been candles, a gap up yesterday, and then a clearing of resistance. If I put a cross here on here, you can see it cleared this resistance. It's outperforming the S&P, and it has been. It's outperforming its group. The group is up. A lot of information in these charts. By the way, this is chart number 1C. Now here's one without the windows up here. It's number 1B, but I like to use 1C because it shows me the relative strength performance against the market and against groups. Now I'm going to go back here. Once again, I need to change my view. It went back to industries this time because I didn't resort the combo. If I go here, here we are back. You can you can look at all these groups and look for individual stocks, or there's other ways to prospect. Now, you should always have a watch list that you're watching, stocks that are setting up nicely and so on. I'm just showing how you can go about finding where the strength is intraday, and I'll, I'll cover that in a different video. What I want to do now is, rather than going doing top-down like this, let, let's take another approach here. I'm going to go into my designer and uh, remember in the earlier video when I had the money flow in and out, I want to take that money flow list that I had or I have from last night and I'm going to open this up and we're going to go down into my folders intraday and what I'm looking for here, I want to see how many of the stocks, let me sort this on industry group, that showed up in the money flow yesterday are continuing up today. So I sorted on industry group here. If you look down this list intraday, you can see which ones are following through and which ones are not following through. If I bring this up, uh, I've got a, uh, whoops, I didn't want that. I've got a slice in here that shows a percentage up and percentage down. It's 50-50. Well, that's uh, one way to look at it. I, I'm, I'm more interested in which groups are following through. We just looked at the application software. We knew that was following through. And if I go back in time, the reason I save these money flow groups is I can go back in time and look at that. And if I get a chance, I'll do a video on that. I go back in time and I see when the application software stocks and so on started coming in. Now here's three semis that were in yesterday and they're following through. I have this is the upside. Let's go to the downside. Now what you're going to see here is you're going to see a lot of stocks that were down yesterday where the money is starting to flow in. You can see here's that apparel and footwear group. Money flowing in today because of this column. Integrated utilities was poor yesterday. Utility networks were poor, but with a strong market, there's going to be buyers jumping in to these stocks. So this is the way I'm using the money flow. But also, I want to see what's happening right now. I want to see where the, the strength is. So what I do is I go back in and uh, I'm going to rebuild the user smart groups. Usually the rebuild that I did a few minutes ago would be sufficient, but I just want to 
get this up to date. I'm going to pause this while I'm doing it. So that's been rebuilt. Now what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to all securities, get out of this money flow. Alternate space bar takes me into all securities. And then during the webinar series I did recently, I put these in under the top down stocks and groups moving up and down apply to all securities. I'm going to go to folder C. These are stocks up intraday demand $15 and up and $1 to $15. And I have the same on the downside. So if I click on this, get this out of the way, sort it on raw combo, it tells me where the strength is today and Nike's right on top based upon an industry group. You can see this; these stocks are all up, all 100 of them. And in the groups, what are the groups? You can see they're all up. If I go back here to the industry, it's dominated by application software, internet-based services, banks. There's only three semiconductors. Uh, in the top 100. I, I limit these to 100 stocks. Let's go down. Well, I'll leave this back up there. I'm going to go down to the 1 to 15. And what do we have here? Application software. Computer hardware. I'm looking for techs. Casinos. Okay, these are the 1 to 15. Now I want to go back up to that level of the $15 and up. But this time I'm going to click on number three, which is intraday demand, the ones that are in most in demand, sorted on raw combo. And this Morphic Holdings comes to the top of the list. It's a biotech stock. So these are based upon demand. Uh, these intraday ranges early in the morning, sometimes these ranges are a little confused. Like here's one that's trading above range, which it really isn't. But let's just take a look at some of these here. Morphic. It uh, is beaten down, but the demand is... Now it's updating here. Well, after the update, it moved down to here. You can see that it sold off hard, but there's stopping volume and uh, heavy demand coming into it on the volume. So. There's buyers that are bottom fishing here. After the update, let's take a look at Trimble. And you can see heavy demand here. That's why this demand combo uh, will bring the ones that are in most demand to the top of the list. On Holdings, big gap up. Zscaler, big gap up. Big gap up on Walgreens Boot Alliance. So. Money is flowing into a lot of these beaten down stocks. These are $15 and up. Now if I go to number 4, these are 50, under $15. Here's an $11 stock with heavy demand. I'm sorry, it's, it's a $2 stock. Up 11% today. But with heavy demand after a couple of VPA flags. Here's a $7.28 stocks with heavy demand. Here is a, uh, let's see, here's an $8 stock, GigaCloud with heavy demand today. I'm just going through these very quickly. Of course, you're going to look at the weekly charts. You can see there's a ton of overhead resistance on this. There's just bottom fishers coming in here. Probably is best to stick to the $15 and up stocks uh, where you're going to have more uh, participation by institutions and bigger traders and so on. Now, not only do I have the upside, I have the downside, $15 and up. Uh, here's one, Delic U.S. Holdings. And this is sorted on industry groups. So oil must be down a little bit today. But this is finding stocks that are down today. Here's oil services and gas. You can see there's profit taking in these stocks today. If I bring this up, here's where the profit taking is oil and gas, biotech, specialty pharma. Now let's go down here to the 1 to 15. 
You're going to see something very similar here. Now let's look at the supply. $15 and above. You can see that this stock's down 11.56%, specialty pharma. It's had a big run. But these are down on heavier supply, and here's the 1 to 15 down on heavier supply. Now I'm going to go back up quickly to the stocks up and looking at demand. And if I bring this up full screen, you can see the ones that have crossed over recently. It's either going to be a 0 or a 1. A 2 means it crossed over three days ago. That's super micro computer. I mentioned that in an earlier video today. You can see it's outperforming the S&P, its own group, and the industry group itself. So very strong today. Let's look at one that crossed over yet. Yeah, I looked at that one already. Uh, CSTM crossed over yesterday. You can see big move up. If I move it down to 2C, you can see the crossover yesterday. And here's a follow through today. There were also pocket pivots yesterday. Notice that its group is not doing much. So if I go back to 1C, and I'm moving around quickly. You can see this stock is outperforming. The group is flat, but this is outperforming the group, and it's outperforming the S&P. Anyway, that's a very quick and efficient way to find out where the strength is. And that is in this folder right here. See stocks up and down uh, after I rebuild uh, the indexes. Now, here's some instant watch lists. I don't want this video to get too long, so I may come back to this. A bullish uh, end of day from last night. Uh, bullish intraday. Bullish VPA scans end of day. And canceling type stocks. If you don't want to spend a lot of time prospecting, you can look at these. Let's just look at an end of day and see if any of these from last night are up. That's uh, yesterday's percentage price. Here's the intraday change over here in these views. So out of the end of day, seventy-six percent are up today, twenty-four percent are down. These all have a fan up. Uh, the intraday range. Let's see how they're holding up. Uh, PETQ is near the top of the list, but these were from intraday. So you can come in here and you look for the ones that are following through. These are end of day, I mean, I'm sorry. See the ones that are following through. That one doesn't look so great. This gap to open, kind of pulling back. One more thing and then I'm going to end this video. So this is end of day. And then here's intraday. These were updated when I ran the the uh, smart groups. These are setting up after a pullback and the next group is crossing the 3-6 the crossing. So these were setting up. So if you want to do a, uh, a search for some trades that you can possibly take early in the morning, these were setting up yesterday and are starting to follow through. I like to look at the intraday range, let the market go a little while and see which one are holding up. These all gapped up. And, you know, they're trading trading near their lows. So I like to give the market a chance to settle in a little bit. Now one more. These crossed yesterday or the day before. And they're continuing to go again today. Once again, I like to look at the intraday range. These that are holding up. Some of these are real expensive stocks, but you can find some candidates here without spending a bunch of time going top down. So that's it. Uh, I'll give some ideas. You just have to uh, play with this and practice. And I'll be doing more in 
other other videos that are to follow. I'm just giving you a cursory look at what you can do here.